Hi guys, this is uh, Unit 2, Segment 2, Video Note. Um, so far you've learned about the three main sources of energy for the planet. Energy has a cycle. You learned about energy efficiency. And you learned the difference between renewable and non-renewable resources. You also learned about coal. So I'm going to continue into the fossil fuel discussion with oil, and then I'm going to go into natural gas, and then we're going to talk about uranium for this video. So oil. It's also called petroleum. It's a liquid hydrocarbon, just like uh, coal was not a liquid hydrocarbon, it was a solid hydrocarbon, meaning it has hydrogen and carbon in it. We must drill wells. Awesome. We must drill wells into the oil bearing rock, which usually is sandstone or limestone or salt and clay. And you can see that um, petroleum is actually ancient ocean or wetland areas. You've got 300 to 400 million year old organisms, they are alive and then they die and they drop down to the bottom and they form this um, animal and plant remains layer. More silt sand drops on top of that and so it pockets this, squeezing out some of the um, elements and concentrating the carbon and the hydrogen. And anyhow, it forms in the, eventually, millions of years later, it forms an oil and gas deposit. We have to drill a pipe down through this impen hard to penetrate layer down into the oil and gas area to pull that up and then use it. So oil. Some pros to using oil. Um, we actually can use oil for a lot of different things. So we can refine it to form different fuels like diesel, gasoline, and kerosene. Um, we use it to make rubber materials and plastics. It's very versatile. And oil Power plants are, it's, the technology is already known. The infrastructure for the power plants is already, it already exists. And we understand it and it's in place. Um, I included this picture. You're not going to have any test questions on it and I'm not sure how well you can read it. But it, it shows an oil refinery and basically each layer is a different temperature zone. Generating a different chain of carbon, okay, which ends up to be a different fuel. So you can see they have the gases at the top, less dense, and then we have gasoline forming down here at this temperature range, and it's a five carbon or six carbon chain. Remember, the bonds between the carbons are the stored potential energy, and when we combust that material, we release that energy. Naphtha is used to make plastics and chemicals. Kerosene, if you've ever had a kerosene heater or seen one, that has a longer carbon chain. And then we have diesel which has an even longer carbon chain, which means diesel fuel is different than gasoline by the number of carbon chains and it also requires a hotter temperature to combust. So diesel engines and gasoline engines are very different. You cannot use those fuels in each other's um, types of cars. We have oils, uh, lubricants and waxes and plastics and bitumen that is used for road material. You won't be asked any questions about this particular Thing, but I know it's one of those FYI's. I know you might have thought, you know, how is diesel different than gasoline? So I included it. Okay, some cons. What are the drawbacks to using oil? Several you can probably come up off the top of your head. We have oil spills. Very risky for the environment. We know with the Kalamazoo River issue where we had the oil spill, it transported um, many miles down river. And then we had the Gulf of Mexico issue we're still dealing with. The wildlife is still recovering and probably will for many years. Um, drilling and piping can be dangerous to humans and the environment, risky. Uh, reserves, protected, I'm sorry, protected areas. Now that we're becoming limited, um, if we know that there's oil in a protected land, underneath a protected land, there's more of a push to go in and get that out meaning it's going to threaten that protected land because to go in and create um, pumps and pipes and all of that really does change the e ecosystem. So the reserves are declining. When we burn this oil, we also produce air pollutants like SOx and NOx. Those things combine with water and make acid rain. And also it's economically risky for countries that have to import it. If they don't have it on their own turf, then they rely heavily on another country that might have it, which means there's a power struggle, which potentially could lead to anger. 
and wars and things like that. So the, it's just a tough deal. All right, now natural gas is the last fossil fuel we'll talk about. It's also called methane. It occurs above the layers of oil and coal down deep in the ground. It's colorless and odorless, and we primarily use it for heating, although we can use it to generate electricity too, but heating is the main. Right? You see a, a burner here from a stove. Okay, the pros to using natural gas, you guys. Natural gas is carbon and hydrogen pure, okay? There's no other elements like mercury or um, lead or any other pollutant, sulfur, anything like that that's in the coal and the oil. That's not in natural gas. Natural gas is CH4. I mean, that's it. Um, and it, so it produces a large amount of energy when we burn it. It emits less CO2 per unit of energy compared to coal and oil, and it burns fairly clean because it's pretty pure. Now the cons. We have to pipe it through to transport it from one place to another. And so these are normally underground, and the ground can be unstable, and therefore cracks can occur, and so we can have natural gas leaks. They're highly flammable, and they're risky. So... Even though it emits less CO2, CO2 is still emitted, and we know CO2 is a GHG. Okay, last of the non-renewable energy resources. This is the last one. So there's four total non-renewable energy resources. We have coal, oil, natural gas, and nuclear. Nuclear is not a fossil fuel. So of all four non-renewables, if you are asked which one is not a fossil fuel, your answer will be nuclear. It is uranium U-235. U-235, and it has to be mined out of the ground, that would be the fuel that is in a nuclear power plant. Instead of combustion, instead of combustion, it uses nuclear fission. Fission, if you are a good speller, a trick you can remember is that fission means splitting, so there's two S's, so the S split itself, and there's two, so in a fission, the atom splits itself, making two. The nucleus does. And you can see an, an illustration here. It gets bombarded, split, and ener huge energy is released in result of that splitting. So nuclear fission is what's taking place in a power a nuclear power plant. And you do need to know the U yeah, you do need to know the U two thirty five. You need to know that number. Okay, so basically we have instead of combustion, we have fission. It heats the water. The water turns to steam, the steam turns the turbine, the turbine is connected to a generator with magnets around a copper wire and electricity is then produced, that's how it works. So it does require cooling water to condense the steam so that it can go back into the process. So it's usually located near a water source. We have some along Lake Michigan. Pros to using nuclear, there is zero air pollution, zero. There's no CO2 emissions, zero. Um, a very small amount produces a huge amount of energy, way more than coal, oil, or natural gas. They cannot compare. So this diagram down here, I know it's small, but it is awesome. So if you look over here, this is going to keep popping up. I don't know how to get rid of it. But it's a 1.0 kilogram of uranium down here at the bottom is equivalent, if you look up here, to 10,000 kilograms of oil. would give you the same amount of energy. You'd have to burn 10,000 kilograms of oil or just under 15,000 kilograms of coal to produce the same energy of one little kilogram of uranium. So a little goes a long, long way. Of all the options that we have for producing energy, this one produces the most. Now, it doesn't mean it's efficient. We'll talk more about efficiency in class. It's definitely not efficient, but it is a lot of energy. The cons are obvious, and you probably already know about them. Um, they produce nuclear waste that are radioactive for thousands of years, okay? In accidents, you are dealing with fission reactor. That's huge, powerful business. And accidents are, are risky. We're actually building more nuclear power plants now than ever before. Um, we have to be reminded about Chernobyl. In 1986, there was a nuclear accident that happened, and this is a picture of a map of the area. And this is a ghost town right here totally radioactive. You, nobody can go there for thousands of years without ramifications in your DNA, mutations. Um, the storage of the used spent fuel 
is still radioactive and so to find a storage spot is pretty tricky. Right now, currently, and I didn't know this until a few years ago, they actually store the spent fuel that's radioactive at the power plants themselves. And we have Palisades power plant that's near us, just south of South Haven. And right at the power plant itself, it has a, a vat underground protected that is storing the spent fuel. So, but long-term storage, where are we going to go with that? You know, do we bomb out a side of a mountain and store it there? You know, so we have to be careful because the areas that we do store it need to be geologically stable, and mountains generally aren't. I think that's it. So that's where we stop. We are done. Done.